queria dar as boas-vindas a todos, ao mestre Ian Jun e aos professores que estão aqui me acompanhando, professora Ângela Sossi, professor Fernando de Lázari e professor Davi Garretano. Estamos aqui para uma entrevista especial com o mestre Yan Jun, que é o detentor da linhagem da família Yang de Taishishuan. O mestre Yan Jun está preparando a sua visita ao Brasil em novembro. E ele vem para uma ocasião muito especial, a inauguração da filial brasileira da Associação Internacional de Taishi da família Yang. É a primeira filial da associação fora dos Estados Unidos. A inauguração vai ser em novembro, em Ribeirão Preto, e nessa ocasião o mestre Yan Jun também vai dar um seminário. Para mais informações sobre o evento, a gente vai colocar o site aqui embaixo. Então vamos então dar mais uma vez as boas-vindas ao mestre Yan Jun e começar com a nossa entrevista. Hello everyone. Good evening. Our hostess tonight is Ana Horta. We'd like to welcome everyone, Master Yan Jun and the teachers who are here with us, Angela Sossi, Fernando de Lazari, and myself, your translator, David Garitano. We are here for a very special interview with Master Yan Jun, holder of the Young Family Tai Chi lineage. Master Yan Jun is preparing his visit to Brazil in November. He's going, uh, is coming for a very special occasion, which is the grand opening of the Young Family Tai Chi Chuan International Association Brazilian branch. It's the first international association branch outside the United States, and the grand opening will be uh, held in November in Ribeirão Preto, Sao Paulo. And this occasion, uh, Master Yan Jun will also be teaching a seminar. For more information, we'll be uh, giving to you the website below. We are putting the information here. So let's welcome Master Yan Jun once more and start our interview. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. É, boa noite. Boa noite a todos. Boa noite, Mestre Yan Jun. É uma alegria tê-lo aqui neste momento e poder compartilhar a sua presença com os brasileiros e latino-americanos. É, já que a, a sua vinda ao Brasil é, está ligada com o desenvolvimento de uma a filial da Associação Internacional, pode valer sabermos uh, alguma coisa sobre a história da família Yang. Uh, o senhor poderia nos passar alguma informação a respeito da, dos anos que existe o Tai Chi no mundo, o Tai Chi da família Yang, especialmente, e sobre a sua família, especialmente, para que a gente possa conhecer um pouco a sua história. Hello, hello, Master Yan Jun. We are very happy to have you here with us in this special interview. And to celebrate this moment, uh, this first Brazilian branch, uh, also related to all the Latin America, We would like to know uh, from you a little bit more of a uh, young family Tai Chi Chuan uh, history and also uh, uh, some background for everyone here who does not know the young family Tai Chi Chuan history. If you could please tell us uh, a little bit of your history. Uh, again, you know, I'm very happy to be here, uh, you know, discussion with uh, a young family Tai Chi Chuan with uh, uh, whoever people are watching. And uh, also uh, listen to Angela speak. I mean, everyone speak the Portuguese uh, feels very familiar in the sound, uh, you know, of my ear and the feels the close and uh, uh, very happy uh, to be here with everybody. Well, uh, regarding on um, the background of the young family Tai Chi Chuan, uh, it's, you know, been a little bit uh, history, uh, you know, since end of Qing Dynasty. Uh, if we talk about the founder of the young family Tai Chi Chuan, uh, we should uh, back to the end of the Qing Dynasty, which around 200 years ago from today. Uh, the founder of the Yang family Tai Chi Chuan is Yang Lu Chan. Uh, I would say, you know, he actually 
learned from the Chen village and back into his hometown, which is Yongnian County. And at that time, actually, nobody know there is a Tai Chi Chuan exist. And even he learned the, uh, you know, art back to his hometown. He called the art uh, sticking faced, uh, which is they are sticking together or because they use a soft countering hard, uh, it calls cotton faced. So there was a, a not really, a, you know, by the time officially are using Tai Chi Chuan this name yet, uh, when he back to the hometown. Then uh, I would say the Yang Lu Chan, his contribution is, uh, uh, you know, for the Tai Chi Chuan area, it because uh, he went to a tournament competition. Uh, the competition in the past are not today uh, competition. They are different. It was just like a direct fighting tournament. Not like today, we have a sequenced, uh, then we have a free fight. Uh, those kind of fighting are different than today's tournament. So he actually uh went to this uh, tournament and uh, uh there was uh, no one can win him uh, then you know uh, everybody are surprised the way how he used the technique of uh, fighting with the different kind of martial arts and the people are uh, really uh, you know uh, impressed uh, how can how he can demonstrate soft neutralize a uh, heart and uh, uh you know countering the people are using fast uh, hard method uh, that was uh, uh, quite uh, impressive with many martial artists uh, then you know he become a uh, famous then people ask what kind of this art is and he dressing as a tai chi chuan so which is a uh, uh, I would say Yang Lu Chan's uh, contribution uh, contribution for the Tai Chi Chuan is uh, he made the people knowing the Tai Chi Chuan exist in the martial arts area. At that time, uh, Beijing is a capital city uh, for you know for China, which is where the emperor lives. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of the emperor's fam family. And Yang Lu Chan was uh, uh, pretty involved with uh, uh, teaching, coaching, uh, you know, with uh, uh, royal family. And also he is uh, training the troops. Uh, you know, there is one, uh, uh, what do we call a base for the troops. He was, uh, tr uh, you know, training the troops uh, at that time. So this is, uh, you know, Yang Lu Chan's a moment and his contribution and uh, uh, building up the knowing recognition with the Tai Chi Chuan at uh, his time. Yeah, and uh, in the uh, second generation of the Yang family, uh, they keep stay in Beijing and the building the recognition of the art. And uh, for sure that time, uh, is a transition from a Qing dynasty into a uh, Republic of China. And uh, during that transition, uh, you know, they are actually building, you know, still Beijing is a major city at that time. So which is uh, uh, Yang Lu, uh, I mean, Yang Lu Chan has uh, two sons uh, carry on the art, which is uh, Yang Jianghou and uh, Yang Banghou. Both of them are spreading the art in the Beijing areas, uh, which is uh, uh, made Tai Chi Chuan very well known in very high level officials and also uh, in the general uh, in the Beijing area. So that is the second generation, I would say they are uh, settled down, rooted in the Beijing area. Yeah, when you reach into a third generation, which is uh, Yang Cheng Fu's time, uh, China also had a, a transition from the Beijing 
into a Nanjing as a capital city. So, which is uh, uh, Nanjing is more located in southern China, uh, southeast China. So, which is uh, the central of the government are changed location. Uh, that also made him, uh, you know, uh, start uh, shifting the teaching from northern China into the southern China, and uh, uh, by this opportunity. And also by the moment, because uh, during the Qin Dynasty to Republic transition, China was uh, quite weak. Uh, people are poor, and the spirit is uh, low. Uh, then you know the central government at that time they also want to use something to rise up people's spirit. Then. They carry on the martial arts is one of the method can help people rise this uh, their spirit. So uh, central government also very much promoted for martial arts, traditional arts. Then you know they even established the uh, national arts uh, central training academy. So this is uh, you know. Uh, uh, they established this academy in Nanjing, this area. So uh, Yang Chengfu's traveling to southern China was first offered uh, a position teach in this academy. So that is how he started traveling to south. Then later on, he from Nanjing continue move down to south, like Wuhan, uh, Canton. Uh, then uh, his contribution, I would say, is uh, you know spreading the art into the whole China, and uh, up to you know 1980s, China you know started the opening, and uh, that's give us a, a opportunity for you know more connect with the outside of China, which is my grandfather. Uh, following this moment has opportunity actually to be able to teach internationally and he is actually the first one step on the land of the outside china and the teaching tai chi chuan internationally so i will say you know the background of the young family tai chi is from uh, yang lu chan uh, you know make people knowing the tai chi chuan this art to second generation, Dan Ho, Jian Ho, to settle down in central of the China, uh, you know, uh, to be rooted, settle down there. Then to third generation, they spreading from north to south, then all over to the China. Then to the fourth generation, uh, more, uh, you know, teach inside the China, the young family, finally have the opportunity to stepping out teaching internationally. So this is about the, you know, a little bit the uh, history background for the art, how transform, uh, transforming into today. And also there is a, a history related with the art uh, modification. At the Yang Lu Chan's moment, we call old frame, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, should I say a more like an original moment, how he learned, uh, how he demonstration the art. But at that time, uh, I would say it's not really uh, totally 100% as of how he learned. Because he was facing a royal family, and uh, he also training to the uh, troops. And uh, he actually already made a major modification with the art. Uh, from the story says, he erased most of the jumping uh, movement, uh, one leg movement to make a more uh, stable in demonstration for the uh, performing for the art. And uh, uh, that his times, justify 
Then into a second generation, they went to a two different directions. One, make it more small, acting faster, uh, you know, demonstration more or harder. And the other direction, they make movements larger, a small a circle bigger, and a more softer, more neutralization. So which is a, become to a small frame and the middle frame. So this is what the modification done by the second generation. So in third generation, which is Yang Lu Chan, uh, Yang Chengfu's moment, uh, at that time, actually he continue carry on his father's middle frame and uh, make movements even larger, bigger, and uh, easy for most people to uh, join for the practice. Mm -hmm. Then at that time, we call his form is a large frame. And uh, I would say, because Yang Chengfu uh, has many students later on carry on, on his way of the teaching, and also because he published the book with the image on how demonstration each of the movements, uh, you know, from the image, we can know how exactly do for the uh, movements in their demonstration in the externally. So we actually uh, recognize Yang Chengfu as uh, uh, the one for the Yang family Tai Chi trans model. He is the one we say is a finalized Yang family Tai Chi Chuan. So that is um, art itself. Uh, from Yang Luchan's time until to Yang Chengfu's time, uh, how we, uh, you know, made this kind of modification. And in nowadays, because Tai Chi Chuan become more popular in, you know, uh, general public, uh, also involved with many events like a tournament, like a stage demonstration, so we following the needs, uh, actually there is a more uh, shorter form for beginner, for senior, for competition. So those are modification done by nowadays, but uh, we still concern the art root is come from uh, Yang Chengfu. Yang Chengfu's uh, sequence which is a traditional young family Tai Chi Chuan is the root for us to learn or demonstration uh, or teaching for the young family Tai Chi Chuan. All the other short form is just for a special purpose uh, in certain moment for use. Bom, eu gostaria de fazer uma pergunta. Eu acho fascinante né, a história da, do Tai Chi e principalmente da família Yang, né? E a, a, aproveitando aí toda essa história que o mestre falou sobre as gerações anteriores, né? Eu gostaria de perguntar para o mestre Yang, é, agora ele é o atual detentor da linhagem da família Yang, em 2009, é, em uma cerimônia tradicional, ele foi nomeado a quinta geração detentor da linhagem. Então, eu gostaria de perguntar como ele se sente né, diante dessa responsabilidade, né, sendo a quinta geração detentor da linhagem da família Yang, e, e o que ele pensa assim, em relação ao desenvolvimento do Tai Chi da família Yang para o futuro. Então, uh, so, uh, Fernando... Uh, here is asking the master, uh, based on this uh, fascinating story he has just told us, uh, emphasizing the, the great event that happened it happened on uh, 2009, that uh, when Master Yan Jun became officially the fifth lineage holder of the young family Tai Chi Chuan. So uh, Fernando wants to know uh, how does the master feel about it, his responsibility, and what are his plans for the future of a young family Tai Chi? Uh, 
Well, uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, a question actually for myself, I keep asking myself and to seeking the, you know, a good answer in there. And uh, from my understanding, uh, I looking back to my ancestors, each generation, they done the contributions with the Taiji Quan, you know, for the contribution for the Taiji Quan's uh, spreading development and uh, uh, make Taiji Quan to be more uh, beneficial for human beings' health. And uh, uh, I think this is uh, still the directions. How can we uh, remaining the Taiji Quan to be uh, art be continued? And also, how can we, uh, you know, to more make Tai Chi Chen be beneficial for people's health? This is actually the uh, question for me. And uh, I, you know, seeking back, you know, the time, the moments, difference, and also from uh, today, we are not only time different. It also become to multiple culture, uh, background people involved internationally. So this is a, a big part. I think we need to uh, create a good a system uh, to helping people, uh, you know, in the standard way, and uh, uh, you know. Uh, or let's say a right way, standard way, uh, you know, to receive the good beneficial from the Tai Chi Chuan. And uh, uh, China, I mean, from culture, this point of view, in China's organization, uh, we actually uh, have this kind of a culture or tradition, uh, which is, uh, the family actually is the uh, small element. The nation is a bigger part of the family. So which is, uh, if you want to make, uh, you know, whole nation to be strong, each individual family to be strong, settled, this is uh, important to bring up, you know, the big family, like a nation to be strong. And uh, that's the moment, you know, when everything we done, even like a business, sometimes you can see uh, in China, they have they are business. They often say this is a family business because like a father teaches son, then they carry on the same arts, uh, you know, uh, same knowledge, let's see, you know, to do a same kind of a business. This is, uh, uh, you know, tradition we have this kind of uh, uh, you know culture uh, and uh, in Taiji Chuan this area in the past what they did is more like students but they don't they do have a general students but they also uh, have a disciples which is uh, the idea is uh, a running as a family together and the disciples teacher they have this kind of like a father son's relationship and it's the same as the family nation you know uh, this all like uh, uh, you know same kind of a system but nowadays i think it's a different uh, you know we are more open to the uh, public which is uh, uh, not just looking for a blood connection or like a teaching lines, a connection. And uh, uh, for sure, we would like to keep this part because this is a culture side. But how we can run in a good system to be make a, a, like a general public and to use a system, for example, since the International Association established, we are established the system for the technical side, which is ranking. We also established, uh, you know, uh, the teaching site, which is certifying the instructors for the standardized 
the teaching skills. So those are uh, a system we've been are stab- uh, established, you know. So uh, I think when we reach into my generation, uh, I think uh, uh, to keep the traditional culture is one part, but to following the modern day of the way how we are doing things and how we managing things, how we can uh, you know make more people involved, uh, you know together uh, to push or to spread the Tai Chi Chuan uh, into more general public. To give a more people beneficial, this is our time. So I see this is uh, uh, you know uh, my generation. How should uh, you know take uh, the duty into this direction? And uh, uh, I don't think uh, the art uh, can just simply only say. Saying is okay. This is connected with the bloodline, and uh, then we should always like a bloodline to be make a connections. And uh, I, I understand this kind of a culture, but uh, the art is more important by the blood. Uh, I would say uh, to keep the arts continually going, and the. Doesn't really matter who is in charge,、uh, who is、uh, carrying on, you know,、uh, can remaining the art continue going is more important, and that、uh, nobody can stay here forever, and、uh, if the art continue developing, continue spreading, continue alive, we all alive. If the art is Let's see. At the end, then we are actually is truly from physical side we dead, and from spiritual, from culture, from the art that is the end,、uh, which is、uh, I really don't want.、Uh, you know this happened. I really want the art continue, you know, growing and continue beneficial for the human being. Mestre Anjun, o senhor estava falando justamente sobre esse desafio de trazer uma arte tradicional e antiga para o mundo de hoje, né? É, e como então desenvolver essa arte de acordo com o mundo que se apresenta atualmente? É, então, a minha pergunta é Quais são então os benefícios? O que que a, essa arte tão antiga do Tai Chi Chuan pode trazer para o homem, né, a, a raça humana hoje, né? Quais são é, essas essas características, essas qualidades tão maravilhosas que fizeram a arte é, se perpetuar e que podem hoje ajudar a A, a geração atual e as gerações futuras.、Uh, Ana Orta, our host, hostess tonight,、uh, is asking Master Yunjun,、uh, based on、uh, all of these、uh, background, he was sharing with us that、uh, Tai Chi Chuan is an ancient art, and we also、uh, use it today in. in Our、uh, current lives in nowadays time. So she's asking him, what are the benefits for the humans nowadays? How can we use、uh, this ancient art for、uh, the current generation and also the future generation? Well,、uh, for this area, you know, we. Uh, we should say,、uh, Tai Chi Chuan has、uh, a deep, a theory behind. So, it based on Yin Yang philosophy.、Uh, this is the foundation.、Uh, then, create this art always represent on Yin and Yang a two side.、Uh, I know in nowadays. 
many people are practice uh, Tai Chi Chuan. Uh, they received a benefit. Uh, you know, this is uh, uh, generally they every practitioner they have this kind of a feeling or understand it. But actually, I also feel uh, many of them are received the benefit can be even more or uh, Tai Chi Chuan can be even more beneficial for them. Uh, most people, I would say, they receive the uh, beneficial are mainly is from they are physically are doing some practice demonstration, you know, more like exercise. In this way, they got improved because of the 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 special way of the moving uh, in Tai Chi Chuan, they use a slow motion, uh, even the movement. Then you know. Uh, uh, kind of fit with many people's, uh, uh, you know, uh, ability, be able to demonstration for that. Uh, but uh, I would say uh, Tai Chi Chuan can take you even more, uh, which is uh, if we understand Tai Chi Chuan has a two sides, like body and also apply. What you every day doing actually is uh, a physical exercise, which is good. Uh, they can benefit you, you physically, uh, which is uh, uh, very important. You demonstration physically every day. Uh, but uh, I would say Tai Chi Chuan is not just only about, you know, a body, this part. They also related with the other side of the Tai Chi, which is applying. Applying, you know, for what? Uh, tai Chi Chuan, we know they are actually rooted in a martial arts, this direction. Uh, yes, they have a lot of the, uh, you know, physical side of the exercise or technology or technique. Uh, they related with the martial arts side. But actually, uh, they related with the yin yang theory. Uh, the idea is finding a balance. So what you learned from physical demonstration, which is uh, uh, if you can apply it, uh, central your mind, calm yourself, and uh, uh, meeting with the relationship with the people, not necessarily always uh, resisting it, but also not e uh, necessarily always you are collapsing it. Uh, finding a good uh, balance that can be a more fu uh, finding tone as a harmony with people are getting together. I mean, this is a kind of uh, example as applying. And, uh, uh, you know, people always have up and down, which is, this is just like a yin yang change emotionally. And if we understand something, you know, you are always be able to finding, oh, there is a hope there is a changing, then I can be a justify myself to make myself into a good balanced internally or, you know, uh, acting behavior externally also be balanced. This is a beneficial from T and U, which is a body and apply. So I would say uh, Tai Chi Chuan's beneficial uh, first is self cultivate as physically you are demonstration practice, have a good exercise uh, for your physical health. But the most beneficial, I would say, is in applying this applying side. Nowadays, I would say it's very important and that you will be take a further step, step for beneficial for it. And uh, uh, there is no limitation on which area you can apply in it, uh, what content you can apply in it. We can have ma many examples. Scientists, they have this kind of yin yang balance, how they understand it, you know, uh, the, the, the both sides. And, uh, you know, people with people's relationship, we also use yin yang both sides. And uh, even, uh, you know, uh, with uh, a normal life and uh, running a business, everything actually 
can be applied uh, in this foundation as a philosophy. So which is, uh, uh, I would say, uh, physical parts cultu- self-cultivate this site. People are easy to, you know, beneficial it. Uh, but I think these are good people to teach and uh, uh, you can test in martial arts this line, how we can use a soft, neutralize a hard, uh, how we can, uh, you know, uh, using not resisting, can achieve a balance with the opponent. They can open another side of the understanding for you to receive the beneficial of the Tai Chi Chuan. So applying, actually, I will feel, uh, I, I should say, I feel uh, today people are not really a beneficial uh, very much in here. I will say nowadays, uh, besides, uh, you know, we learning Tai Chi Chuan in physical side, self-cultivating this side, how we can be improved applying this side uh, will helping us uh, to finding, you know, uh, more interesting or more benefit for people. And uh, I would say this is a, a huge area uh, to be discovered because how to apply, there is no limitation. All is about your understanding on Tai Chi and how you can creating the applying into the different areas.